Hi, everybody. I'm Louis Schwartzberg, and I'm really glad to be here with all of you to connect on Earth Day. Um, it's amazing that we can uh, connect virtually, and I've got Grace Young, a climate activist in Massachusetts, who uh, we're going to have a conversation and maybe take a little magical mystery tour in my time lapse room. Hi, Grace. Hi. So, Grace, what do you think about, um, is there something you'd like to know about time lapse and the work that I do? Yeah. So, like, why do you make these videos? Well, I like to take, I like to take people on journeys through time and scale. And what I mean by that is I do a lot of time lapse and slow motion where I speed things up and slow things down. That kind of takes us out of the uh, arrogant human perspective that the only thing we see or, or we feel is important to us matters. So now we can kind of experience and feel what it's like to be a flower. What, yeah. what is, what is it like to be a hummingbird? You know, by slowing it down or speeding up the flower. What is it like to be a bee? I mean, the importance of bees and pollinators and that relationship between flowers and bees. So when you can kind of dive into their world, go into their space, then you'll automatically, I think, fall in love with them in order to protect them. And I don't have to tell people how important it is to, you know, plant a garden or protect the bees, which gives us, you know, the important healthy food we need to eat. This, in this way, you just fall in love with it. And I think yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that actually does tie into my next question. Like, why is protecting the environment so important to you? Because life needs to go forward. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I want to protect the environment because life needs to flourish. And um, I think that's what, you know, DNA is all about. You know, it keeps on wanting to evolve into better forms of species. And... I guess because my parents were Holocaust survivors, I always grew up feeling like I'm against any kind of extinction, you know, whether yeah. it's race or creed or, or species, we have to always protect life. Yeah. And um, so I'm very, I think, motivated uh, in order to do that. And then the other, the other thing, Grace, when I was at college, we, it was during the Vietnam War, and we all protested against the injustice and the fact that we were, you know, killing innocent people, bombing them in, in Vietnam, you know, putting napalm and Agent Orange, you know, deforesting the jungle so we could find people to shoot at. Well, you can imagine if you were a young person at that time, you would be an activist and you would stand up and you would say, uh-uh, this stuff's got to stop. And that's what actually spawned Earth Day 50 years ago. It was that kind of rebellious revolutionary movement that said, no, we're not doing this again. This has to stop now. Yeah. So I hear a lot that art drives social movements forward and that art is really important to the climate movement, to, to movements. So how does art help the climate movement specifically? And in, in particular, like photography and videography? Well, I think, you know, video, you know, films and, and videos really are important now to help people, you know, reconnect with nature because we are nature. It's not like us versus them. And a lot of us, you know, are never gonna be able to go to Africa or Antarctica or Iceland, you know, because that takes, you know, a lot of time, money and resources. There are many kids I know that live in, you know, marginalized communities that, leave, that live 10 minutes away from the ocean that have never seen the ocean. We gotta turn people on to being, you know, kind of like a homecoming. Let's come back to nature. Yeah. Fall in love with it, protect it. And then you're going to get it. You're not going to litter on the beach. You're going to see something on the beach, broken piece of glass, pick it up, you know, because it's your mom, you know, you're going to yeah. really protect it. And so that's what I think as the films I make, uh, I hopefully can achieve. And that way it's not like a to-do list. It's not a homework assignment. You can't throw away a bunch of paper if you love trees, right? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard a lot. Because, like, especially when I'm working with other people, a lot of the stuff we do is out of fear. Like, I don't want to lose my home. I don't want this. I don't want that. But it is really important to also find the love in it. And, like, we're not just fighting against something. We're fighting for something. Exactly. I'm really proud of, like, the work you guys are doing. So tell me a little bit about the activist activity you're involved with in Massachusetts. 
Yeah, so I got involved with the climate movement back in the summer when I started organizing a strike for September 20th. I'm sure you've heard. It was one of the largest global protests coordinated in history. And it just showed me, like, it just showed Evan the power of youth. And one of my favorite climate chants is, we are unstoppable, a better world is possible. And September 20th really showed that to me. Yeah. And in addition to coordinating strikes, we do other actions like banner drops, community action days. With Fridays for Future Massachusetts, we're currently doing a lot of like virtual, virtual events for Earth Day week, and, such as like a virtual art build for Mashpee Solidarity and a Poetry Slam because art is so, so, so important to the movement. And yeah, just a lot of like digital organizing and stuff because like we don't all come from like the same town and can't meet up in person we like before even before the pandemic hit like the vast majority of our work was done like over slack over zoom calls so it it was really easy <laughs> when the pandemic hit because we were just doing the same things right oh I'm, that's great and by the way because i'm a filmmaker that's how we communicate it a lot as well i'm always yeah. looking, you know reviewing a video on Vimeo and making notes and, and getting back and forth in virtual space because that's what's kind of cool about the digital process. Yeah. It sounds like you're so active. Is it, is it also your passion Can, or is there a difference between the two? So I don't consider activism a passion. When I think of passion, I think of like a class you really like, a hobby, a sport. And while like these things are all important, like, like taking care of yourself and having things you enjoy that isn't just activism is super, super important. We don't do activism for fun. We don't do it because it looks good on a resume or because we want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because act, like the reason that we're fighting against the climate crisis is because we're pouring water on a burning house. I'm sure most of us would rather the house not be on fire and we would not have to act as firefighters. Exactly. Well, also, you guys are going to be inheriting the future, and um, it's important. And, and so, so to make you feel good, I think, and connected, I mean, that's because it's Earth Day. we got to really think about, okay, why is it the 50th anniversary of Earth Day? When you, what, was it, what, is, what was the phrase you just said, Unstop, unstoppable? We are unstoppable. A better world is possible. Exactly. And we were saying, you know, um, never again, you know, um, you know, stop the war and um, protesting that we were also, you know, hurting the planet. 50 years ago, we knew we were hurting the planet and we knew what we needed to do about global warming, you know, and we had, you know, the answer is about solar and wind and regeneration. And then we have to ask ourselves the question, why 50 years later, haven't we shifted our behavior? What's it going to take? And I think that as you asked me earlier about filmmaking, I think what we need is a shift in consciousness. Yeah. We need to be able to be more, you know, awake and present. And, and maybe what this COVID-19 is doing right now, I think Mother Nature may be asking us to just put everything on pause and let's reevaluate because coming out of the pandemic, we need to do a giant reset. We yes, can't we go do. back to business as usual. You understand that, you know? Yes. Returning to, like, I keep on hearing, oh, we're going to return to normal after this. Return to normal, back to normal. The thing is, like, normal is killing us. Exactly. <laughs> we were, yeah, and then 10, 10 years from now, I mean, it could they you know, like 360.org have said it will be impossible to ever turn the clock back, you know? Yes. So we have a really, a really short time frame. You guys are inheriting the future. It's really important that I think young people everywhere really – you know, make your voices heard and realize that there were guys like me back then that we were screaming. We were being chased by cops in the street, okay? We were, you know, and getting hit over the head. And in order to say, you know, we want to stop pollution, you know, protesting in oil refineries, that was real. I just want you to know that history repeats itself. It's not like we're heroes and did you want to emulate us, but history is a lesson. You know, if you it don't is. history, you know, you have to repeat it. And, and just realize that, you know, we were, people were fighting in the streets, you know, or being chased. And we were putting flowers in, in the barrels of guns of National Guard that were on college campuses. And kids were being shot and killed. Okay? So I just want to, you know, 
let people be reminded a little bit because it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. That's how it all started. And that, that Earth Day was the silver lining that came out of the protest, that came out of the rebellion, you know, anti-war movement, the movement for women, the, the, the movements for people of color, you know, all of that happened in the same time in 1970. It was a giant awakening like, oh my God, we had no idea that we were racist, that we were destroying the planet, that we were, you know, unfair, um, that we're, you know, killing life. I mean, that was a big wake up call. And, yeah. and here we are 50 years later, and I think this is a great opportunity where we have everybody's attention because attention equals consciousness. Yes. Equals, and you get that. You know, even yeah. like Trump, you know, he, he plays the game by being vulgar. He can grab your attention. If he grabs your attention, he's got your consciousness. That's the game. And you guys are growing up with uh, you know, these digital, you know, social media, communication, visual literacy tools where you already understand that game, you know, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. If I grab your attention, I've got you in the palm of my hands, right? Yeah. Being able to look at things, life that is smaller than you and bigger than you, um, faster than you and slower than you, broadens your perspective, right? Opens your yeah. heart. So it's just like travel does when you go to another country and you hear other languages. It's like the most powerful learning tool. And you realize that your lifestyle in your little town, in your state, in your country is not the only way people live their lives, right? Yeah. And if, if we can open our hearts to the different quote unquote metabolic rates of other <laughs> creatures, right? Some things live fruit fly two days, a redwood tree 500 years, you know? Where are we in that spectrum? You know, we're just one little tiny species in that spe spectrum. But we need to understand that the human species is hurting the planet. And we're hurting, you know, the foundation of life, all the complex, you know, interconnected symbiotic relationships, which is really more reflective of the feminine than the masculine. Um, you know, the, 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 what I don't like about nature films are the ones that are all about predator versus prey, survival of the fittest, macho stories of kill be killed. You know, the real story of nature and ones I've done in my film, Fantastic Fungi, which is about mushrooms and mycelium and wings of life about pollinators, bees, bats, hummingbirds, butterflies. It's the feminine story of nature. It's the fact that it's all about, you know, connection, uh, relationships, regeneration, rebirth, nurturing, the, the billions and billions of microscopic interactions that are happening every second under the ground you're standing on between the uh, you know, animal world and plant world with pollination. You know, if the bees go, we go, we lose our food supply. We have to stop like poisoning, you know, and using pesticides and GMOs because, you know, um, what we do to nature, we do to ourselves. And it becomes pretty obvious that sometimes it takes a long time to find out that those pesticides end up in our cereal in the morning, you know? But, yeah. but we gotta make our voices heard to say that's gotta stop. So if you're, if you're trying to kill an insect, you're killing me, you're killing the bees. Poison is not the answer. There are natural ways of creating symbiosis and balance and harmony. It's been going on for three and a half billion years, you know? We should just, you know, let nature do its thing and not, not mess up something that's already in harmony. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. No, I, I enjoyed talking to you and I'm glad that you guys are being active in Massachusetts. It's really awesome. And I'm glad that the youth are connecting. And um, like you said, man, you, you've got the tools, you know, and you've got the, you've got the heart. And um, I think that, uh, I have a lot of faith in what you guys are going to do. Thank, Thank you. you.